Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So over here, we have already installed web code and we have web code running. So we're going to go into A1, which is under injection on the left side, as you can see. So as mentioned earlier, web code is a vulnerable web application system that we can penetrate into. And at the same time, they have structured the entire curriculum to make it very, very easy for us to learn about cybersecurity, especially in the area of web application penetration testing. Okay, so we are going to go into SQL injection intro. Alright, so over here, we're going to learn about structured query language and how it is being utilized by websites, web application systems, as well as mobile application systems to actually allow users and systems to store records. And when I say records, it could be user database, credit card information, shopping cart, and many other database systems that they could actually use to manage and power recording all this different data. So of course they are going to go through about SQL query, SQL injection and how SQL fundamentals work. So I think this is a really important step in terms of learning how SQL injection come about. So first thing first on number item two, what is SQL? All right, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. So it is a query language that help us be able to pull record, update table information, delete table, drop tables, and all this manipulation inside a database system. All right, and a database system can be from Microsoft SQL, it can be from PostgreSQL, it can be many of these different kind of database systems. So here we have a table. So a table is a 2D row and column, all right, that allow us the ability to store data almost like an Excel sheet format. And over here we have the columns all right so the columns as you can see are identified by the column names so we have user id first name last name department salary of 10 all right so this can be for example a password field that is used to authenticate users into the system and a user id is a unique value It's a unique value to uniquely identify and distinguish across the different roles so all these roles represent data for one specific perhaps user as part of record keeping and of course as we scroll all the way down we can look at how we can instruct the system to do SQL query so in our case all right look at the example table try to retrieve the department of the employee Bob Franco okay so what we can do here is we can try to retrieve those data and we can see that Bob Franco has a user ID of the following so what we will do now is to use of course you can go to sqlcost.com so we can use select Asterisk stands for all from all right employees where user ID equal and then we can paste the user ID data over here so we can paste the user ID data and then click submit so once you click submit it will immediately pull out those record that complies to this specific filter where the user ID is 96134 and it will pull up this specific row of all these different details so in this case, we can see the salary, the off 10, the department, the last name, the first name, the user ID. So all those information inside the table with all of those columns in relation to the role will be pulled out. Okay, so this is the basic of how SQL query is being run. So every time you're logging into a website, you're logging into a site and so on. What it does is that it will actually pull those records, do a check on the record. And then after that, allow you access to the site depending on whether you pass or fail to log in. And we have DML. DML stands for Data Manipulation Language. Okay, so it allows us to select, insert, update, delete tables information. All right, and of course, an attacker, if they know how to utilize data manipulation language, they can change the information of a particular table record or many rows in a table. Okay, so this are the different all right data manipulation language commands storing retrieving modifying and deleting data okay so over here we have an example right where we are receiving and retrieving data okay and now what we will do is to change information of a particular row using data manipulation language so what we can do is use update whereas right, so update will be the instruction that we will send so we can enter update Okay, and another good thing is that I'll be paste I'll be pasting into the comment section over here. So I've actually created and all the payloads that we will use as part of learning about how to run all these attacks. So this is for item number two: update employee set department equals sales. All right, 
and where user ID is equal. So we're doing a direct filter again. Okay, so all I gotta do is paste the information here. Update. All right, this is the table name. Set the column name. All right, into sales, and then where the user ID belongs to. And of course, Toby Barnett has a user ID of eight nine seven six two. So go ahead and click submit on it. So once you click submit on it, it will say you have successfully completed the assignment. All right, and this will immediately show us the information that has been updated to the department of the user. So immediately we can find out those details over here. Okay, so we have updated the table. All right, so moving on into section number four. Okay, on lesson number four, we have data definition language. All right, so this is about creating the database, especially in the area of defining data structures, database schemas, will let us understand how data should reside in a database. Okay, so this is also important in terms of the database structure. All right, so we have create, creating a table, all right, altering a table, dropping a table in itself. So whenever we have a table inside a database system, we have to first create a table. And by creating a table, we have different multiple columns. So the columns we have over here, first name, last name, user ID. And over here we can see there is a primary key. All right, so one of the columns has to be a primary key to uniquely identify the values inside each of the rows inside the table, okay? And then we have variable and character, okay? So this is the type of data that we are going to input into a partic particular column. So over here, we have the SQL query as well. Okay, so what can we do? Now try to modify the scheme by adding the column phone to the table employees. So over here, I'm gonna to explain to you what the payload looks like. Okay, so we can copy, all right? So what we are doing is we are altering the table because we have first created the table, but now we need to add in a column, all right? So we need to alter the table, all right? And then of course, you specify the table name, in this case, employees. And then we put an add, okay, we add, this particular column as well as a column data type var char and then followed by the open bracket 20 and a close bracket followed by semicolon to end the instruction so go ahead and click submit and immediately okay i can enter over here go ahead and click submit and we'll be able to add the information into the system all right so author table employees at phone cha or character All right, so as you can see over here, I can reset the database quickly so that we can rectify what could have already been added into the database system. All right, so we have auto table employees at phone bar char 20. So that helped us able to add in this particular column into the table. All right, so with that, we're gonna pause here. All right, and then we'll go into section two in the subsequent videos. So once again, I hope you have learned something valuable in today's class. And if you like what you've just watched, remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.